In this video, we are going to take a look at the Tentacle Sync E. That is a tiny little device for time code synchronizing any audio source with a video source and that with pretty much any camera. Now, if you watched a couple of my latest videos, I talk a lot about time code synchronization. It's kind of a new topic of mine that I really like to dive deeper into. With that, I also had the chance and opportunity to talk to Tentacle Sync E, and they were kind enough to send out a set of the Tentacle Sync E as well as the Track E audio recorder. Now, they did not sponsor this video or any of the other videos on my channel in any way, except for providing these devices free of charge. Now, if you don't know about time code synchronization, what it is and what it can do for you, maybe it is good to check out this other video first, where I talk about why this might be interesting for you as a topic. And if you want to learn more about the tool to actually do the synchronization in the post processing, then there will be a video in the description there as well. Now today in this video, I want to specifically talk about the Tentacle Sync E, what it does, what it doesn't, and of course, I will also give you a full unboxing as well as a tour of the app on the iOS device and also how you can actually synchronize multiple Tentacle Sync E whilst not using any apps whatsoever. You can do that right there in the device. Now, first, I want to talk about what problem this device is actually solving and what it can give you as a benefit. And all that starts with the fact that there are certain devices that have time code features built in and others that do not. The ones that have this built in are cameras like, for example, the C70, as well as audio recorders like the F6. This is basically in the professional grade cinema cameras, as well as in field recorders and professional grade audio recorders. These types of devices have time code input and output ports in different sizes and also different plugs. And they basically have a standardized system of communicating time code with each other. Now, these kinds of devices usually have a inbuilt clock or a time code generator, and that can be synchronized between each other by plugging these devices together at one certain time. And then you can use them separated apart again because the inbuilt time code generator in these types of cameras and audio recorders will actually run that accurately that usually across a full day of filming, you won't run into any problems. Now, the problem is, what do you do with devices that don't have a time code generator built in? And of course, also, what do you do if you want to synchronize your time code without having everything in one spot close to each other so that you have the cords that you can plug into things as well? And that's where something like the Tentacle Sync E time code generator comes into play. This is a device that actually just hooks up to your time code port. In this case, I have the version that hooks up to a mirrorless camera or a DSLR camera with a mini jack connection into the microphone port. And that way, a camera like the Canon EOS R has the ability to write time code information into the video files that are being recorded. And that way, I can later synchronize everything nice and cleanly in my timeline based on that time code information. So basically, this little box right here is a very accurate clock and it has a output to a mini jack connection. And that again can be exchanged for different cords for different time code ports. And it also has a built in microphone. This microphone is valuable because that way, when you are hooking this up to, for example, a mirrorless camera, then the one channel will actually have that microphone information and the other channel will have the timecode information. And that's super valuable because you actually get scratch audio next to the timecode in that kind of recording. Now, there are two more things built in here. One is a battery so that all of this is actually battery powered and the battery holds up quite long. And the other thing is a Bluetooth module. And with that app on iPhone or Android, you can control the settings of this time code generator. And you can also synchronize all the devices that are currently in reach of your phone. Later in the video, we will take a look at the app and the setup process. But first, I think it's time for an unboxing. First off, this is how the box comes. You have a bit of information down here, but really nothing fancy, just whatever comes in the box. Opening the box up, we are greeted by a nice thank you note. Then we have a bit of a 
German explanation of how everything works. The same thing again in English so that you know how to basically handle this. And the cool thing about this is that it actually gives you the information of how you could use this all without using the application on your phone. And then of course we have a lot of fine print and the Tentacle Sync software card so that you know where to find that. Then of course we have the two Sync E devices because this is the standard set and there you get two of these. I already went ahead and color coded them with the rubber bands. Usually they come both with this orange right here. Now this is a very simple little device. It is made out of a good hard plastic. It has a bit of a Velcro kind of a strip at the back here. You have one switch on the side, you have a USB-C port on the bottom, as well as a LED. And then you have a microphone at the top right here, two LEDs right there, and a headphone jack. This is the mini Klinke connector, which we will be using for either syncing two of these devices together, or connecting your device to a camera to the microphone port there, so that you can use the Tentacle Sync timecode, which is basically an SMPTE timecode, so that you can have that recorded to a camera that does not usually support any kind of timecode. So that's the devices, and let's put these to the side for a moment. And below the other thing, we will find another little box right here. And this is as close as I could make it to the original unboxing experience, because obviously I already have tried all of this out and given a bit of a test to it so that I know how everything works. But basically you find the stickers, you have the rubber bands so that you can color code your Tentacle Sync E devices, you have the Velcro attachments so that you can attach these Velcro thingies here to, for example, somehow on your um, camera cage or something similar. So that's there. Then you also have this little pouch here, which comes with two compartments, so that you have a front and a back, and there's a divider in the middle between this. And what you also get are basically two USB-C to USB-A cables, the mini jack to mini jack cables, which you will be using for connecting the Tentacle Sync to each other for syncing, or connect the Tentacle Sync to your camera. And what they also did here is a really interesting little clamp here, which you can use to slide on top of here, so that you do it like this, and it slides in place, and that way the cord doesn't just get yanked out of here. There are also way more um, professional connectors available that you can get to also connect to timecode systems that use different types of connectors. However, we are going to work with these mini clinker to mini clinker cords because that is what the Zoom F6 works with as well as my cameras that I have available to me. And that's already everything that you have in the box. In the next step, we will look at the details of how all of this works how you can sync these with the app as well as manually, and of course, the workflow going forward from there with the Tentacle Sync app. Now on the app side, there are actually three different applications available from Tentacle Sync that are compatible with the Sync E device. The one app is called Tentacle Sync. That's just the application to control all the Sync E and Track E devices. Then there is one that's called Recorder, and one that's called Time Bar. We are going to take a look at all three of them, starting with the Tentacle app. Now this app is specifically controlling the Track E and the Sync E devices. You can change settings as well as start the syncing process between all of them. First up, of course, with one of your devices, you wanna add that to the list via Bluetooth. You just turn the device on on the side by holding down this side switch. Then you click Add Device, and it will actually just show up on the list. Here I can then go and click on the device and now it's asking me to bring the device very close to it. So now I can actually just bring it this close right here, basically touching the phone and now it's synchronized and we have it in our list right here as well. 
Now, a quick overview of the interface is that basically you have a list of all the devices that you have connected. When swiping on them, you can remove them. And looking at the bottom, we have three buttons there for syncing, starting a recording and stopping the recording process. And we also have a gear icon at the top right, which will give you control over certain settings of the app. It changes the light or dark mode in the system, as well as the ability to remove devices. But you can also do that by swiping left on any of the devices on the list. Now we are going to take a look into the Sync E devices, and I have two of them here on the screen. I have the Reba and Zoila. Now the Tentacle Sync team has a random generated name database that is basically assigned to these devices up on installing them for the first time. But you can also change those when you click on any given device there. And then you have the device name at the top here. And when you click in there, you can of course change that. Then you also see the current time that is running on that timecode generator. You have the battery level, the output volume, which I just leave at automatic because it basically recognizes by itself whether or not to send a mic or a line signal. This is done with recognizing if the device is reading plug-in power. And if there is plug-in power, then it's mic level and otherwise it is line level. Then you can set the frame rate for this time generator and you have the outer power of time to be set to two hours, four hours, eight or 12 hours. This is something where I have found that it basically powers off the device by itself if it is not connected to anything. However, you have to make sure to unplug on the side of the device and not just like this. If you have this connection, so it's still plugged into the tentacle sync, but it's not plugged into a device, then the auto power off mode does not trigger. Then we have the user bits at the bottom here and there. You can choose between different date formats or if you want to include the date in that. And you can also choose to do custom U bits if that is something that you want to use. And I would assume that if you know what that is, then you also know why you want to use it. But generally speaking, I just leave it at the date setting. And lastly, you can also say to wireless master sync this recorder. So basically saying that this here is now the master and all of the others should be synced based on that. At the bottom, you have a bit of more technical information like firmware version, hardware version, and also serial number. But other than that, that's basically it. Now, lastly, you also have the ability to change the icon that this recorder is basically signified as in your overview. And this can be useful to either have them color coded based on the color of the basically the bungee cord that you have around there. Or you can also color code or icon code them based on the type of device that you use them with. For example, you can say that a certain tentacle sync is always connected to your audio recorder and then set this up to be a audio recorder on the list here. I generally set this up to be the color coded version of the different devices that I have so that I have the purple, the orange, blue and green. This makes it very easy for me to know which device to grab when I look at this interface. Now that's a basic overview of this application. We will take a look into the synchronization process in a moment. But while these are also synchronized and running in that mode already, we also can take a look at the other app, in this case, the Tentacle Sync Recorder app. Now, basically, this is an audio recorder app that can take the audio from your iPhone microphone or a attached microphone to the lightning port and record that. The cool thing, however, is that you can select the timecode generator that you want. And with that, the audio that you record here on your phone will basically be very easy to synchronize later on. Now, this makes it so that basically you have a, for example, Lavier microphone and you use this audio recorder and then you can record and also synchronize in the post process very easily. There aren't really many settings here. You can change the project name, which signifies the file name changes. And then you also have the recording bit depth as well as the sample rate. And if you want to have input monitoring or not. And you, of course, have a list of the files that you can then send to your computer, for example, with AirDrop. So that's the audio recorder app. And lastly, we have the time bar application. 
And the time bar application is actually just a application that opens up and you have a choice between the different timecode generators that are currently in the vicinity and reachable via Bluetooth. And now I can select one of them. And this application basically just shows you the current time on that audio recorder. This can be really cool if you want to really make sure that the video signal is synchronized to the timecode by simply recording this screen for a couple of seconds. And then you can use that information whilst post processing to line up the timecode and the video very, very exactly. But with that, we have a quick overview of the Tentacle Sync applications. But now I think it's time to jump into the setup process of the Sync E, how you can do that manually as well as with the Bluetooth app. Now, as I've mentioned before, the synchronization can actually be done manually with cables or with the Bluetooth application. Now, first, I want to take a look at the manual process of synchronizing because this can be really, really useful if you don't want to use an extra step with the phone to connect everything together and have a whole process there. It makes it easier to synchronize multiple devices with the Bluetooth application because you simply click one button to synchronize them all and it is done automatically over the air. Now with the cord version, however, you have to plug in every single device to each other so that they are synchronized with that. Now first up to do the synchronization process, you have to use these devices on the side because there's this lever right there and you pull that down and by doing so, they are turned on. And once they are turned on, you have this little LED on the top that is actually showing which mode they're in. Right now, these two are in the red mode and you can maybe see that they're not really blinking synchronized. Now, if I turn one off again, it just starts blinking ferociously and at some point stops and now it's turned off. So that's also the process of turning these off manually. I now can change this into the sending or master mode by simply pulling down longer. And with that, at some point, this LED will actually turn green. And now it's blinking in green mode. And with that green mode, it means that this now is a active clock and others will be synchronized to it up on connecting. So right now I can plug in one of the ends of this mini jack cable on this green one. And then if I take the other end and just plug that into the recorder like so, it takes a second or so. And now these are blinking exactly at the same time synchronized as they should. Now I can unplug this cord and this basically will continue to blink in sync for the next about 12 to 24 hours. That's about how accurate these clocks inside are. Now with that, I can also take another mini jack cord, plug that in there, have these little clamps right there. And those are so that the cord will not be yanked out in any kind of way. So now that's secured there and the other one will be secured like this as well. And now these Tentacle Sync devices are ready to be connected to a camera or audio recorder. Now that's how you can synchronize these manually if you don't want to go through the phone and the Bluetooth application. However, if you, for example, have more devices than these two, like the Track Ease, for example, as well, and maybe you have four or five Sync E devices for multiple cameras, then it might be easier to just go onto the app have all of them connected there. And then you can actually just hit the sync button at the bottom here, set your settings in terms of frame rate as well as the time, click start. And with that, it will just go through all of the devices and synchronize them all together. Something else that you can also do, however, is you can go into one individually and set the master sync from there. Basically saying that this here should now be the master clock and it should be synchronized to either all connected devices or all of the ones that are in red mode. That basically means when turning on, you hold the slider down so that it turns on. At some point, it will start to go in red mode. And if you hold it longer, it will eventually go into green mode, which essentially is master mode. So you want to go into red mode, just turning it on. And then you can tell this here to basically tell all of the red modes 
to be synchronized to this one device here. I usually just go in, I have all of the recorders and the sync ease ready that I wanna use, and then I just go on to sync all, click the start button, wait until they're synchronized, hook one of the sync ease up to my Zoom F6 so that the internal clock on the Zoom F6 will be synchronized to that. And I will make a video specifically about that process as well. And then I take the sync ease to the cameras, hook them up there, place them with the Velcro, and of course also take the track ease and then place those onto the people that are supposed to be part of that interview. Something I wanna mention here is that once you have them synchronized, you should probably not turn them off because otherwise you have to resync again. And especially if you have a process where you also take this as a master clock, and then you, for example, overwrite an internal clock of a Zoom F6 or any other type of audio recorder or camera that has timecode built in, then you would also still have to go back to that device and again, plug this in and have it read that timecode. You, of course, if you have enough Sync E, could just leave it there and then over Bluetooth synchronize everything again, but just make sure that you either leave all of the devices turned on or you resync them once you did turn them off and on again. Now that's my unboxing overview and setup guide for the Tentacle Sync E. I have to say my workflow here in the studio has been made much easier by having these available so that I can use the synchronization based on timecode instead of having to do clap syncs or similar things. In a way, sometimes it feels like a hassle to turn all of these devices on because that's kind of like the downside if you don't have devices that have synchronization of timecode built in, that you have to have these charged, you have to have them turned on, and then make sure that they are synchronized so it's a bit more stuff to worry about. However, that is made up by the fact that in the post-processing, you just throw all the files with audio or metadata timecode into your timeline or into the synchronization program, Tentacle Sync Studio, which you also get by purchasing one of these or multiple of these devices. Then you can just very simply synchronize everything together without having to do any waveform, clap syncing, visual syncing, or any of those kind of things. So if you're working with multiple cameras, multiple audio recorders, or stuff like that, then I would definitely look into these to kind of like get to know that process because it can take off a lot of the work, especially in the post-processing and aligning of things. Now, my question for you today is, who do you think would benefit the most from timecode synchronization? Is it a wedding filmmaker, a documentary filmer, a podcast filmmaker, or a YouTuber? You can leave that down in the comment section below. And you can also leave any questions there if you have any. I will try to answer you there or make a video specifically about that. And while you're down there, also leaving a like for this video would help out a lot for the YouTube algorithm and also helps me better understand what kind of videos you like to see on my channel. Now with all that said, I hope you have an amazing day. If you want to watch more, there are two videos linked right here that might be interesting for you and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao!